Up until now, the channel has been mainly focused on lawn care, but after a recent poll, a lot of viewers gave me some feedback that they'd like to see more about what goes on in the garden too, and I had considered about making a monthly garden update. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments, and let's see what goes on in the month of August in the garden. Okay, this video is going to be shot similarly to my monthly lawn care series where I'm going to be talking you through types of things that you want to be doing in your garden to keep it in really good shape. The first plant you can see here that I've got is a Arisimum Bowls Mauve. This is a long flowering uh, plant. It gives lovely pink flowers up and it lasts right the way through the season. I bought some of these plants in a relatively small form and I'm thinking of adding them in some borders somewhere because they give really long lasting colour and they're great value for money in my opinion. The first thing that I'm going to be looking at doing in this video is around deadheading and removing some of the earlier flowering plants that have flowered. In this case we're going to be looking at these Heuchera Silver Scrolls which have got lovely dark uh, foliage. Uh, the foliage lasts the majority of the year round and they throw up these flower stems which start off in a pink colour and they turn white and then eventually they start to brown off and die. These brown ones are the first sort of flush of flowers that came up and this is what we're going to be removing. We're also going to be taking a look at the foliage which should be a deep uh, purple colour which looks something like this with these rich veins coming through. And whenever we're looking at plants we want to be thinking about the uh, three D's to remove which is uh, dead damaged or diseased. So we're going to be removing the dead flower stalks, any diseased or browning leaves and any damaged branches to the plant. Even if you don't have these exact heucheras, the same will apply to most of the earlier flowering plants. You can have a look to remove any spent flower stalks and damaged leaves. Just follow the brown stems down to the base and you can get a pair of uh, secateurs in there and just take them off. If the spikes are really dead and brown and crispy they will sort of pull out but your best method is making sure you take them down to the base which really frees up that airflow to the plant. If you want to find out any more about the plants that I'm using or maybe buy some for yourself, I'll try to put a link down in the description below. And here's the type of stuff that we've removed. You can see this is all sort of dead or dying uh, plant material and this will apply for a wide range of plants in your garden, especially those that have already flowered early this summer. The next tip is around feed and water in your plants. We've had quite a wet summer so far this year, but you do need to stay on top of the watering, especially for any new plants that may not have established root systems. These two hydrangeas are just about to come into their prime. The root systems are quite well established, but I do keep them topped up with water. And most importantly, I'm feeding the plants regularly on a weekly basis. I'm using a miracle Grow multi-purpose um, fertilizer for this, which is a liquid product. I put it in the watering can, mix it up and apply it to the beds. I've dropped a link to this product in the description below. Here's two rhododendrons that have already flowered in the air that also need just a little bit of housekeeping. You can see I've got a larger one and a smaller one. The smaller one I've actually had to prune right the way back last year because it wasn't growing too well but actually a really heavy pruning on this you can see it started to shoot up loads of new growth and I think within a year or two it's going to thicken up and fill in. 
I can see some leaves down here that are starting to turn brown or yellow. I'm just going to pull those leaves off. Remembering the rule of the three D's, diseased, damaged or dead. Just remove them from the plant to keep it nice and healthy. In terms of deadheading, you can see the spent flower blooms on this. You can just kind of twist and pull these off, remove all the brown material, and where every flower there was last year, it generally should branch into two flowers for the year after. The next flower at the back is another hydrangea which is called Hydrangea Black Steel. It's got dark black stems on it with uh, the white flowers coming through. I had a bit of a, an issue with this the first year that I actually pruned it incorrectly and chopped all the flower buds off and it hasn't really bounced well back from this so I'm hoping that it'll form some new buds and new flowers this year. The key thing about hanging baskets right now is to keep them watered on a daily basis, especially at this time of year. You also want to be removing any of the dead material and the spent flower heads because this more than anything for these type of plants is going to push new growth and new flowering. I've neglected this part a little bit and you can see that the petunias haven't sort of taken hold yet but any of the dead flowers and the brown material pull them off at the base, deadhead your flowers, keep them watered. I'm also using the same miracle Grow general purpose uh, or all purpose fertilizer on these. This part of the garden is really low maintenance. I've got the uh, red robin shrubs at the back with some uh, steeper tenuissima grasses at the front. And then I've got a bigger grass here, which is a um, pampas type of grass, which flowers later on in the season with the iconic feathery type of plumes that come out the top. The plants that are stealing the show this month are these Crocosmia lucifers. They come up and die back every year and they come from corms and bulbs and these ones are actually bought from Amazon. I've left a link in the description below and they flower these wonderful red flowers that come through and they're quite a tall plant, useful for the back of the border and really showy. The flowers last for around four weeks and it really brings a pop of colour to the back of the garden. If you're enjoying this video and like to see more about garden and DIY lawn care, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. If you've got any questions about the plants or feedback on this particular video, please leave me a comment in the description below. The last bit I wanted to talk about was the Japanese Acer, which is actually put on quite a nice bit of growth this year. I previously moved it from a more shaded spot of the garden because it wasn't doing too well. Um, and in this spot, it seems to be growing a lot better. But over the summer, the ends of the leaves are just turning a little bit brown. Um, I'm not 100% sure why this is the case. Um, it's not particularly windy or sunny in that spot. So um, if anybody knows a thing or two about these, uh, drop me a comment in the description below about why the leaves may be going a bit brown on here. If you'd like to see more videos like this, or if you've got any questions about any of the topics that I brought up today, drop me a comment down in the comment section below and give the video a thumbs up. In the meantime, here's some videos that I thought you might like.